As our military missions in Iraq and Afghanistan wind down, members of the armed forces are returning home and readjusting to civilian life in ever greater numbers. And more than in past military conflicts, many of these returning veterans are women uh, who will need support just like the men they served alongside during the time in combat. Uh, and according to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, about 16,545 women veterans live in Connecticut. And female veterans struggle with issues ranging from unemployment, homelessness, to mental health, and other issues just as their male counterparts do. And Senate Bill 904 requires the Department of Veterans Affairs to establish within available resources a program that will reach out to women uh, veterans to improve their awareness of federal and state veterans' benefits and services eligibility. 20% of the new recruits are women, and they are in our combat missions and on the front line. So we, we need to kind of change and rethink uh, the way that we are uh, helping our veterans, especially those who have been uh, combat veterans, so that they can reacclimate themselves back into society. Uh, this is probably overdue legislation uh, because of the fact that we have uh, had veterans returning, but we know we have so many more that will be coming back. 280,000 uh, women have served in the post-9-11 global war on terror, and we need to ensure that we are uh, taking care of them as well. Uh, post-9-11 women, veterans have higher rates of unemployment. <laughs> they are twice as likely to be homeless. And according to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, 16,545 women veterans live in Connecticut. Female veterans struggle with issues ranging from unemployment, homelessness, mental health, and other issues. The fastest growing segment of the veteran community are women veterans. And women veterans are much more likely to be of working age compared to male veterans. 84% of female veterans are between the ages of 18 and 64. I'm really glad that we're moving forward with this measure today. I think it's really critical to analyze the services that we're providing to our veterans and making sure they meet the unique needs of female veterans. It's vitally important that women veterans get the recognition that this piece of legislation puts out there. Uh, I would point out that the women who served as nurses back in the Vietnam War uh, were, uh, were not recognized for many years and had to deal with the consequences of that war even though they were not recognized as combat veterans. It, it, women are a vital piece to our armed forces, always have been and always will be and should be recognized as that vital piece. Females and women have been part of our military service for some time now. They do an outstanding job uh, for their gender and for and their credit to the nation. And when I was serving in the Air Force, um, I got to serve with many female colleagues that did a stellar job. Um, you know, the military can be a very rewarding experience, and for me it was. Uh, but for others, it can sometimes be a traumatizing experience, especially during times of war. And with the drawdowns in the two conflicts abroad, with potentials uh, on the horizon, um, these issues uh, never seem to go away, unfortunately. And when they come home, uh, all our veterans deserve our mutual respect and support. Uh, but for the women, they sometimes have different needs um, that are just as important that haven't always been addressed in the proper manner. This legislation will be uh, a step in the right direction to make sure that they will have uh, a support service to start from to figure out and find out how to maneuver through the benefits that they are entitled to. I actually had served as the chair of housing for two years and unfortunately through that position I came to know a whole lot of veterans and the reason I came to know them was because of their situation where they were homeless and um, I recently have been working on another piece of legislation about assistance dogs and again I've met some new veterans in my district who have come to me because of this piece of legislation and it's because they have PTSD. Um, so it seems as though everywhere we turn in every facet of life, we encounter veterans who have come back to us much worse off than when they left. And it is our obligation to treat them with respect and to give them all the supports and services that they need.